Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name's Haley. Um, I grew up on Oahu and I'm really excited to share it with you all. There's a lot of really cool places and things to see there. Um, there's a lot of history too. Um, if you're a history buff, I highly recommend looking into the history of Hawaii because there's a long kind of dark violent history and how um, the monarchy in Hawaii was overthrown, um, a very large military presence. Um, so really interesting stuff going on that's not just, you know, beaches and hikes, um, tons to look into. But I would like to begin sharing with um, the Ahupua'as. So long time ago, um, the Hawaiians split up the islands into different Ahupua'as. So essentially, I like to think of this like a giant pie, and there are pie slices. Um, and each ahupua'a runs from the very top of the mountain where the rain falls down to the ocean. And each ahupua'a was ruled by a chief. And in that ahupua'a, there was enough resources for people to live sustainably. Um, and you'll see that some ahupua'as like this one, Waianae, is way bigger than the little ones over here like Haula. And that's because it gets way more rain on this side, on the windward side, than it does on the leeward side. And so, they had much more abundance of resources um, on this side. And yeah, so that's how the island used to be split up. Um, the Hawaiians didn't really believe in private land ownership. It was mostly public. And um, this is what it looks like today. So if I zoom in to Honolulu, you can see just how busy it is um, and how many individual um, like land parcels there are. So this is businesses, homes, you name it, a lot of private entities that own land um, on Oahu now. So that's just an interesting tidbit of history that I'd like to share. Um, most of the island is actually covered by the Ko'olau and the Waianae mountain ranges. So you'll see here this giant one that runs down the middle is the Ko'olau mountain range. And then this one over here to the left is the Waianae mountain range. Um, and I'll zoom in here on the Ko'olaus. Some full screen. Okay, can everyone see that? Sweet. So if you can see here, um, beneath all the words, there's this epic ridge line. Um, and these are the Ko'olaus. And they're like sheer cliffs. They're so tall. Um, when it rains, these waterfalls run down the sides of them. It's really beautiful. So I'm from this town over here. It's called Kailua. And from my house, you can see the Ko'olaus and you can really see this mountain called Olamana. Um, I wanted to highlight that because it's these beautiful three tall peaks. Um, the highest peak is about 1600 feet, which doesn't sound like much when you know, you're on the mainland over here with Colorado that has 14,000 foot peaks. Um, but do keep in mind that the ocean is right there. So you're, you know, just barely out of sea level and it just spikes up to 1600 feet. So if you look at this photo, just super crazy ridges. Um, this hike is not for the inexperienced. At the top or near the top, there's some really scrambly sections. Um, there's even a section with a rope where you have to, you know, climb up and then on the way back down, you rappel down. So definitely not great for kids unless you have like an extreme sport child <laughs> or um, maybe not best for your beginner hiker friends, but really, really amazing hike. Um, crazy rewarding views. We'll zoom in here in just a moment. Is there a trail? There is a trail, yeah. Um, toward the top, it does get pretty scrambly, like I said, but most of the way it's um, pretty well-worn trail and well-used. So here you're on the second peak of the Olamana Ridge and you're looking onto the third peak, just like a diamond back ridge, it's pretty cool. Um, and you know, most of the hikes I'm highlighting today are just like epic 360 panoramic views. So you can see all of Waimanalo over here, um, looks out over onto Kailua and the Mokulua Islands, which I'll touch on later, um, over onto Enchanted Lake and through to Kaneohe. And here is the first um, ridge of the hike. And then if you spin all the way around, 
you'll see this awesome panoramic view of the Ko'olau mountain range. So that's, that's one of my favorite hikes. It's tough. It's not, you know, one I've done a ton of times because it is so hard, but it's definitely rewarding. Next, I'm going to pop over to one of my favorite waterfalls to go to when I'm home. It's called Monowilly Falls. And it's about a two, two and a half mile hike up this like ferned canyon type area. Um, it's very jungly, very rainforesty, tropical rainforest. Um, and then you can swim if you are so brave. It's pretty cold and you can't really see the bottom. Um, but you can climb up here, you can go up these rocks and then you can jump off and it's really fun. Um, I know some daredevil friends that, if you believe me, will go all the way up here. It's like 40 feet and they'll jump off from there. I've never done that because I value my life, but some people do and um, they're pretty crazy for it. But <laughs> really fun, really, really nice swimming hole. Um, it is a little bit more crowded um, it's become more crowded in the recent years, but really beautiful. Um, another fun fact about Hawaii, you might not know this, there are no snakes there. Um, so hiking is really enjoyable because you don't have to worry about snakes um, because they are so geographically isolated as island chain. Um, snakes just never made their way over there um, on ships and it'd be really hard for them to swim there. And you're not supposed to have them as pets, but some people end up smuggling them in. So it's, you know, we always just hope that like someone doesn't get an exotic snake and it gets loose in the jungle because that would be really bad. Are there any uh, deadly animals or insects or anything on this island? Um, I don't think there are. No, I don't, I don't remember any any crazy, maybe like a poisonous spider or something, something small, but um, no mountain lions, no like large animals that would really hurt you. Um, there's a lot of wild boar that run around, wild pigs, um, but they're, they're not trying to hurt you. So that's, that's a pretty cool part about living there and hiking there. Is you don't really have to worry about that stuff. So the next thing I want to touch on um, is Lanikai. And like I pointed out earlier, um, these are the Mokalua Islands. And on this ridge line, um, it's called Kaiva Ridge, there is a pillbox hike. So like I mentioned before, with the large military presence in Hawaii, there were a lot of lookout points um, for soldiers to see if there were ships coming or planes coming. And those bunkers are still there today. They never took them down. So you can hike up to them. Um, they're pretty cool. You can climb inside them. And it's a really great place to go for sunrise because this is the eastern side of the island. So sun rises in the east. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do when I'm home too, because it's like super close to my house. It's like a less than a mile hike up, get your morning workout in and um, watch the sunrise. So like I said, you can climb in these guys in these bunkers. There's a little hole you can go down with a ladder, um, pretty neat. And they have these all over the island. There's um, four or five different ones that you can go and explore and hike to. And they're all on really scenic ridges because they needed to see far, um, see if there are planes or ships coming. And once again, just really beautiful panoramic views. This is Kailua Bay um, and Kailua Beach. And it's like a five mile stretch of beach. It's just white sand, beautiful, great for swimming. Um, really nice to get a long walk in if that's what you're into. And now I want to talk a little bit about um, the Mokalua Islands. So they are about three quarters of a mile offshore and they're really fun to paddle or kayak out to. Um, I'll show you here for reference. So these are the Ko'olaus that I've been talking about. And this is Olamana with those three peaks. And then the pillboxes I just talked about are right here. So it's all pretty close. Um, this is all the hometown, my hometown where I grew up. Um, and what's really special about the Mokalua Islands is that it is a sanctuary for wildlife. So these birds are called shearwaters and they live on they like nest and burrow on the islands and they're protected. So if you touch them, tamper with their nests, it's against the law. Um, you can be fined 
arrested depending on how bad it is. Um, but really great that they're protected, they're native to the island. And another friend that we see out there is the Hawaiian monk seal. And they're so cute, they're really awesome. Um, similar to the seals you have in California, but they're native to the islands. They're really cute. And they'll like snort at you if you get too close. Okay, so the Mokulu Islands, they're often called the twin islands, even though they're more like fraternal twins than identical. Um, this one is the one that's most popular to visit because there's a beach out front. You can see if you look closely, there's a bunch of little kayaks and surfboards, of people that went out there for the day. Um, and if you hike around this side of the island, it's not a very far hike, but it's really sharp rocks. So bring your shoes. Um, there's a little swimming hole back here that my friends and I love to go to. It's called Shark's Cove. Um, don't be alarmed. I have only ever seen one shark there. Um, you see more like sea turtles and monk seals than you ever do sharks. But it's this really cool natural swimming hole. Um, and the ocean comes in right here. So there's constantly like new water surging in with the tides. Um, and same thing here, it's kind of a theme with the jumping. You can jump off rocks into the water. Um, there's a little jump right here, it's like 10 feet. Water's super warm. You can sit on these ledges and just relax and watch your friends jump. And it's a really nice way to spend the day. I have a question, Ailey. Mm -hmm. um, for people who are like coming to this island, uh, just to visit it as a tourist. Are there like guided boats or how do you get out to this island? Sure, yeah. Um, there are a lot of kayak rental places. So if you don't have a boat, you don't, you don't need one. They rent them you know, for a day, for the weekend. Um, and they teach you how to use them if you are um, inexperienced with, you know, if you don't know how to read ocean water, waves, all that they'll teach you. Um, and it's a pretty easy day trip out to the islands. Like I said, it's only three quarters of a mile out there. Um, and they won't send you out if the conditions are, you know, crazy windy and choppy. And yeah, they'll show you everything what you need to know. And yeah, it's a great, great place to go. Good question. Cool, so we'll zoom out here. It goes so fast. <laughs> The next place I wanted to focus on um, is the Ho'omalugia Botanical Garden. This is one of the best places, in my opinion, to go camping. Um, you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere when really you're just outside of town. So this is the town of Kaneohe, and I'll show you up here. There's a beautiful man-made lake, and you can go camping here, picnicking. Um, there's also, it's a botanical garden, so there's absolutely gorgeous native Hawaiian flowers. I'll show that in the next slide. Just really, really cool place. Um, I used to love going there just to get out for the weekend. Like I said, you feel like you're super far away, but you're, you know, 15 minutes from home. And here are some of the um, beautiful native flowers that you can see, and they all smell amazing. Okay. Next up, we'll hop over to Kaneohe Bay. This is the largest bay in the entire state. So not just the island, but the entire state. Um, and what's really cool about Kaneohe Bay is there's a giant sandbar in the middle. So it's, you know, super, super deep ocean. Then all of a sudden there's a super shallow sandbar and that's all right here, this light stuff you can see. Um, let me zoom in real quick. So crazy clear water, it's like, depending on the tide, it can be one foot deep or three or four feet deep. Um, but people go out there, they bring their boats, their dogs, their kids. Um, it's really fun to take like a sailboat or a motorboat out there. But if you're visiting, you can kayak out there too. There's a close pier you can go from. And they also do charter tours. So really cool place. A lot of people go here on holidays, the July and stuff. Um, really fun place to spend the day. And the water's so warm because it's so shallow. It's really neat. There's not too many places like it. Really special. How deep is it right there that we're looking at, like this spot? At this part, probably two or three feet. 
So, you know, knee deep, thigh deep, and really warm, and you can just hang out. That's awesome. Yeah, really cool. And usually fish are hanging out there too, because the fish love the warm water. So you can see lots of little, little critters, it's fun. So that's the sandbar. And not far from there is um, Chinaman's Hat. And that's the, you know, nickname for it. The real name is, I think, I can't remember the, the Hawaiian name. Um, it's most commonly known as Chinaman's Hat. And it's called that because there's an ancient legend that this man sits beneath the island and that's his hat. So you can see here, super panoramic. I think someone took this on a drone, um, but really beautiful mountain range right behind there. This is Kualoa Regional Park and they have great camping too. Um, so if you wanna sleep right by the ocean, you can camp there. And this is all on the way out to the North Shore. Um, if you've heard of the North Shore, it's um, the most iconic place on Oahu for big wave surfing. And I'll get to that later. Hey, Haley. Um, Jennifer in the chat is asking if the Hawaiian name is Mololiki. Yes, that is it. Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to butcher it because I couldn't remember the exact um, spelling, but that is it. Yeah. And you can actually um, kayak or walk out to Chinaman's Hat because it's so shallow. It's a really shallow reef. Um, and it's like a quarter mile off of um, Kualoa Regional Park. Um, so it's a pretty steep climb to get up to the top, but once you're up here, you just feel like you're on top of the world because you're you know, on an island and you can just see everything, really neat. Okay, we'll zoom out of there. Does anyone recognize this place? I can't see the chat, so. It looks to me like Jurassic Park. That's a great guess, that's right. So Jurassic Park was filmed on Oahu um, in Kualo Valley. And the original one, which I don't know what year it came out, but the original Jurassic Park was filmed there and the new Jurassic World was also filmed there. So here's the CGI uh, little raptors running alongside. Um, the tour vehicle in Kualoa Valley. So if you go there and visit, you can take an ATV tour to see like all the spots um, where it was filmed. So my friend is a huge Jurassic Park fan and I'm like, you gotta get out there, you know, it'd be so cool, you'd love it. So this is one of the um, ATV trails that you can go up on and lots of other films um, have been filmed in Hawaii too, really popular place for films, so. A lot of history there. Um, if you're into movies or history, definitely worth checking out. All right, this next spot is kind of like a Hawaii legend. You hear a lot about this. It's called Crouching Lion and it's a rock formation. So I'll zoom in here and you can see it um, right here on the image, but there's a little story that goes along with it. So I'm gonna read it for you. So here's the lion. Um, Hawaiians believed that this particular rock formation on the windward coast was Tahitian demigod Kupua, a relative of the Hawaiian volcano goddess Pele. He had been caught in the middle of a jealous feud between Pele and her sister, Hiiaka. Kupua eventually chose to side with Hiiaka, which upset Pele so much that she turned him to stone and cemented him to the ridge. To protect himself from Pele's fiery wrath, Kupua instantly went into a crouching position hence the crouching rock formation. And Hawaiians originally thought it looked like a crouching dog because they didn't have lions on the islands. They didn't know what those were. Um, and when Westerners came into the picture, they described it as a lion and it stuck. So interesting little tidbit and it's always fun to look at from the road when you drive by. And also if you hike up here, you can see this awesome view of Kahana Bay it's a pretty steep trail. It gets up really fast, um, but really, really nice view. Highly recommend. 
And there's a lot of um, ancient legends in Hawaii. They are very um, spiritual. If you, it's it's a common commonly known thing that if you take a lava rock from an island and take just take it anywhere from its resting place, then Pele, the goddess of fire, will curse you in some way. It shall haunt you. Um, and my friend has a personal experience with that. His dad took some rocks from Volcano National Park because he's just you know, into geology, into rocks. And he said they had ghosts in their house for years. And then finally, one year he was going to the big island. He's like, okay, I'm going to take the rocks back just because I feel bad. And um, after that, they didn't have as many ghosts. So I don't know. I believe it. But um, be careful. Those Hawaiian gods can be tricky. All right, next I'm going to hop over to the North Shore. So Hawaii is really well known for the North Shore. Um, what this line is called, this yellow line, it's called the Seven Mile Miracle. And it's called that because it's just seven miles of gorgeous beaches and the best waves in the winter. Like one of the best places to be um, like November through January for pro surfers around the world. Um, there's actually a competition and it only happens every, I can't even say, it only happens when the waves are big enough. So sometimes it's three years in a row. Sometimes it doesn't happen for like nine, 10 years. Um, it's called the Eddie I Cow Invitational and it's all the pro surfers in the world. You have to be invited. The surfers stand on call. So they fly out to Hawaii for the winter and they just wait. And one day at you know 7 a.m. they call it, the contest is on and everyone just goes and tries their best to surf the 25 to 35 foot waves. And that's huge. Like they wear life jackets when they're surfing because the water's so strong. If you get held under, um, you can drown really easily. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, and that all occurs at Waimea Bay, which I'm about to touch on here. Zoom in. So this is Waimea Bay in the summertime. Um, super calm, really beautiful, great for swimming and jumping. Um, there's a big rock over here that you can jump off of. The trend continues. Um, really, really gorgeous. One of the North Shore's most famous locations. Um, I wanted to show this video. Let's see if it'll play. Um, to contrast the summer and the winter um, at this same rock. That you can jump off. I don't know how well it's going to load, but crazy difference. So in the summer, it's really, really safe to jump, um, super clear. You can snorkel and swim. And in the winter, um, you're not even allowed to go in unless you're a professional surfer. So really neat place to see in either season. Um, and here's the view on the rock. So it's about 30 feet up. Um, really fun to jump from. They sell t-shirts that say, I jumped from the rock at Waimea Bay, um, just insanely clear water. And there's actually a tunnel underneath the rock if you're brave enough to swim through it. I never have been, <laughs> but um, pretty neat if you can hold your breath and wanna go for it, it's really cool. We have a plug in the chat from Jennifer again. She mm -hmm. says to read Eddie Would Go to a story about Eddie, is it Aikua? I Eddie Aikau, yeah. Aikau, his legendary life. Yeah, I've never read the book. I'd be really interested to. Um, the story is phenomenal of um, what he did. Essentially for a super short version, um, his crew and him were on a boat stuck at sea and they needed help. Someone was hurt and they needed help. And so Eddie said, you know, I'll go, I'll take a surfboard and I'll go get help. And um, the boat eventually made it to shore, but Eddie never returned. And so there's the words to live by, you know, Eddie would go live like Eddie um, and help others. So I would be super interested in reading that story, Jennifer. That sounds awesome. Um, recurring theme also, here's another pillbox hike. Um, so same thing, an old military bunker that was used to keep lookout. Um, and now it's just a recreational hike that's just an awesome viewpoint. 
Um, this hike's pretty steep too, but a nice little short morning workout if you're on the North Shore. Really beautiful. And there's some nice um, artwork on it. Okay, so this part, this is Kaena Point State Park. Um, this is a really fascinating area. There's actually no road out to the point. Um, so the road stops about right here and stops about right here. So you can't drive to get out there. So you have to hike or if you have a crazy off-road vehicle, you can go this way on a really muddy trail. Um, but there's an awesome hiking trail that goes along this side. Um, really, really cool. This is the most Northwestern point of the island and it is also a bird sanctuary. Can you camp there? You cannot camp um, on the point and you can't bring dogs because of the albatross that live there. But there is a campground um, just down the road, like right about here, that's right on the water that's really beautiful. Um, so this is Kaena Point State Park and there's a really nice beach right here too. It's called Yokohama Beach. It's my favorite beach on the island. Um, and so this is as far Northwest, like I said, as you can go, this is the end. Um, and another little military bunker right here. Um, and yeah, so this point, um, the Laysan albatross, about 99.7% of their entire population in the world lives on Oahu and at this point. Um, they're amazing birds. They live about 60 to 65 years. They're about two to three feet tall and their wingspan can be up to seven feet. So they're huge birds and they're really, really interesting. Um, they only have about one chick every five to eight years. So that's why they're so protected because they live a super long time, but they also don't re reproduce very often. Um, and I want to show you their mating call. It's really cute. We'll see if it'll play. And here it'll show you the little chick. Do you see it underneath the mom? Yeah, so they're really fascinating birds um, and super, super rare to see them um, anywhere else in the world. So if you are into wildlife and you're coming to visit, I highly recommend going to check them out. I believe they're there in the winter. Um, that's when they nest and have their babies. Okay, another wildlife type um, place. This is Electric Beach, and it's kind of funny because it's next to a power plant, but that's what makes it so awesome. Um, because there's a power plant right there, it pushes out all this hot water. And so it's really, really nice place to snorkel because like I said earlier, fish love warm water and it's nice to swim in warm water too. Um, so I'll zoom in here. The water's super clear. This is on the west side of the island. So you can see the power plant right here. It's kind of funny. Um, but the water's so clear. If you look down right here, you can actually see some fish swimming. And super important thing to know too, um, you're never supposed to walk on coral because coral is a living organism. And so if you step on it, even you know unintentionally, it can kill it potentially. Um, and so that's super important to know if you visit too. But really cool place. Um, 
Also, if you go really early in the morning, like five or 6 a.m., when the sun's just coming up, you can see dolphins swimming here and you can like swim alongside them. It's really, really cool, really special place. Okay, back to another waterfall. So this hike is pretty popular just because it is um, close to the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And it's also close to like downtown Honolulu. Um, but this is the Manoa Valley. There's lots of like, rainbows and mist and um, it's really lush up here. And there's a great hike called Manoa Falls, which I'll zoom into just right about now. It's really cool. It's super steep um, and the water's really, really cold. So you're not supposed to swim here um, just because it is kind of a crowded trail and they don't want all the rocks getting misplaced and um, falling apart. But as you can see over here, the trail's roped off and there's some people sitting over there, um, but really neat hike. And above this, if you're feeling more adventurous than the average tourist, um, be careful. There's a few more waterfalls above it. Um, you do have to go like up a side hike and then you do have to use some ropes, but it's really neat. Um, there's some nice little swimming holes up there beyond this waterfall. So pretty cool. Okay. The next hike I wanna highlight is called Kulio'o Ridge Trail. Um, it's a pretty steep hike. It's definitely like a Stairmaster type hike, um, but really, really awesome view. I'll show you in just here. Um, Awesome overview. There's like, it's pretty shaded the whole way, um, but at the end, it's just stairs after stairs after stairs, which is a fun challenge um, and really panoramic views. Like these are the Mokalua Islands that we talked about earlier. And this right here is Waimanalo and there's lots of um, like farming land down here. And this is the um, Eastern edge of the Ko'olau mountain range. And right here, this mountain is called Cocoa Head, and I'll touch on that in just a moment too. So as you can see, the island is pretty densely populated too. You know, any area that's decently flat, they'll, they'll build homes in there. It's hard to build on the ridges, but very populated island. Okay, and this is Cocoa Head that we just saw from the other hikes lookout. Um, Cocoa Head is an old crater and it has this railroad type um, wooden slats going up it. It's obviously out of commission. I, I'm not sure what they used to bring up there into the crater, um, but now people use it as the ultimate Stairmaster hike. Um, and it's like a challenge who can get the fastest time. If you, some people do it every single day to try and <laughs> get the fastest time, but it's also fun just to go pretty slow and the view at the top is amazing. I'll show you that. Oh, I might have forgot to put that slide in there, the view. But it overlooks um, almost all of Honolulu and it's really beautiful. Obama does the hike when he comes to visit. So, you know, it's a good one. Um, next up is the Makapu'u Lighthouse Trail. This is a great one. Um, people of all abilities can do this one. It's paved all the way up, um, but it's really cool. There's lots of cool like cacti and stuff up there. Um, the plants around there are really interesting. They're more deserty than the rest of the island. Um, and you can hike out to this lighthouse, which I'll zoom in on here. Um, and this lighthouse still functions. So they turn it on every single night and it warns ships that there's land there. So they don't run into it. Pretty neat spot. And lastly, I wanna talk about my favorite place to camp on the island. Um, this is Bellows Beach. And as you can tell from the aerial shot, the water is just incredibly blue and clear and it's warm. Um, this is what we like to call a postcard day um, at home where it's just like, 
there's no clouds, the water's just so blue. Um, not every day looks like this, but when you when it does look like this, it's really special and everyone tries to get outside. Um, Bellows is great. It's You sleep like literally right on the ocean. You wake up with the sunrise because it's on the east side of the island. Um, there's even little cabins there if you wanted to camp um, or glamp in a cabin. Um, lots of great options. And yeah, one of my favorite beaches on the island for sure. Do you have to camp in, what's that? Oh, do you have to camp in a designated campground you or do. spot? Yeah, but it's like 20 bucks a night or something, so not so bad. Um, yeah. And that is, that's all I have. That's the, the circle tour of all my favorite places to go and things to do and must sees. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question or put it in the chat. Um, and I have a question for you, Haley. Mm -hmm. I am wondering, your like very first slide was that pie slice of the ancient breakdown of the island and who controlled it. Yeah. I'm wondering where your house sits, like where you grew up, which pie slice was that? Yeah, give me a second. Pull it up. Okay, so my ahupua'a is Kailua. So this one right here. So fairly large compared to some of the other ones closer to the North Shore. And I think that is because the proximity to the Ko'ola mountain range is a little farther um, than say these ones. Um, these are pretty steep cliffs over here, opposed to, you can see in the topography right here, um, the Ko'olaus are right here and then it gets really flat. Um, so there's a lot of marshland in here too which is pretty cool. Um, we have something called the Hamakua Marsh, which is another protected wildlife sanctuary. Um, lots of birds live there. And um, yeah, I think that's why ours is a little bigger because we are farther from the mountains. So less rainwater would come down. And today, is there any like remnant of that boundary? It, does it hold any significance? So they have been putting signs up um, within the last five-ish years, um, designating where the ahupua'as start and end. And before that, there wasn't really any signage. So now when you are driving along like the main highway, it'll say like, ahupua'a, you're now in Kahana Bay, or you're now in Waimanalo. Um, so that's pretty cool. And um, a fun fact, there's only one fully intact ahupua'a today um, that's not you know, privately owned by a bunch of different people. It's all in um, one family name. And to buy that land today would be millions and millions and millions of dollars. Um, but it was grandfathered in. So they've had this land in the family for so long. Um, and this is actually, this Ahupua'a is on Kauai, on the island of Kauai. And um, so they own everything from the very tip top mountain all the way down to the ocean. And it's the only intact one, fully intact, owned by um, one entity in the entire state. So we're we're curious. Um, first off, uh, did you ever consider going to UH? Um, I applied <laughs> to my backup school. I wanted to leave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and also, uh, do you have um, do you have a good recommendation for uh, local accommodations? Something a little, you know, obviously outside of um, Honolulu, some, you know, better places to stay. Right. Um, I think it kind of depends on what you're looking for. I would recommend going with Airbnb. Um, if it were up to me, I'd stay on the North Shore just mm. because it's amazing. Um, the energy up there is like really laid back, really slow, and that's how the Hawaiian vacation should be. Um, I never recommend anyone stay in Waikiki. I think you should go there for a night and see the nightlife and see the, see the city, but um, 
great surfing there too. If you want to learn to surf, it's a wonderful place to surf because the waves are pretty small and it's really fun. But um, there's so much more to see than Waikiki. So I would recommend the North Shore. Um, my yeah. hometown too, a wonderful place to stay. It's pretty bike friendly. Um, if you're looking for a similar vibe to Chico, pretty small town and um, some good nightlife and stuff. Why Lua? Like why Lua? Oh, oh Kai Lua, sorry, down in down in this corner. Oh, Kai Lua, and then also why like why Lua? Like up north by Hala Eva. Yeah. yeah, that's up there. Um, I haven't spent much time up there, um, oh. but yeah, I would recommend North Shore all the way. I love it up there. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds like you've spent some good time there, Jennifer. We, I, I, I first visited and I stayed in the Wailua area mm -hmm. before you were born, probably. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, my husband and I lived on Maui um, back in 2017, 2018. So we lived and worked there. Nice. Yeah, Maui's great. It's very slow there. I like that about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have another question from the chat. Um, Christina was asking if you've visited all of the islands and do you have a favorite island? Mm, that's so hard. Um, I think I have visited every island that you are allowed to visit. Um, so you are not allowed to visit Niihau because it's privately owned by the Robinson family. So you have to be invited. So you have to know someone who's a Robinson to be able to go to the island. Um, I haven't been invited yet but I know someone who knows someone, so I'm hoping that someday I'll be able to go because it's pretty beautiful. And that's on the farthest western end of the island chain off of Kauai. Um, it's pretty small. Um, you also can't go to Kaho'olawe because the US government placed a bunch of landmines there um, as a bomb testing site many, many years ago. And there's still, um, bombs that have not gone off. And so it's an extreme hazard to go there. So you're not allowed to go. Um, you're allowed to pull your boat up to the beach and swim and like sit on the beach, but you can't go any farther. Um, so I haven't been to those two, but it's really hard to pick a favorite. They're all really different. Um, Oahu, I have a special love for because I grew up there <clears throat> and there's definitely the most going on um, because you have the big city and there's so many people and there's lots to do. Um, but there's definitely something to be said about the slower islands like Kauai and Maui and Lanai is absolutely gorgeous and there's hardly anyone there. So it's really nice. Um, the Big Island is also incredible. Um, Volcanoes National Park is really, really cool. Um, I don't know if I could pick a favorite to answer your question. <laughs> They're all um, special in their own way. Special love for Oahu though. Are you available for trip planning <laughs> for people who want to go to Hawaii? Um, I could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know it pretty well. Um, and that's kind of my major too. I'm majoring in recreation and tourism. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to help you um, plan a trip that'd be best for you. Because like I said, all the islands are a little different. So depending on what kind of trip you're looking for, that can change where you'd want to go and what you'd want to do. And I would say if you wanted to do something less touristy, before you go, you could contact an NGO like Sierra Club or um, a local hiking group um, uh, or a nature group. They usually have um, a lot of good uh, like service tourism where you can actually Surfrider Foundation, you can do a beach cleanup and um, you know, get to know locals and places that are off the beaten path. Yeah. So that'd be a good place, good ideas for hiking and uh, beach combing and things like that. Great idea, Jennifer. Yeah, there's so much to do that's not just the classic touristy stuff. And, you know, you know that about everywhere. There's 
crazy touristy stuff you can do in San Francisco, but there's so many cool hidden gems um, that you can get involved with locally. So that's a great, great suggestion too. Rebecca, that's awesome. I love Kauai. My sister lived there for a few years. It's really beautiful. Kauai also has um, this scenic coastline called the Nepali Coast. And it's 14 miles in one way and you can backpack the whole thing. Um, I was supposed to do it a few years ago with my family, but then there was a giant rainstorm and it flooded. Um, so I haven't been able to go back and do it since. But there's an awesome waterfall hike um, four miles in. It's called Hanakapiai Falls. Um, really cool, worth looking into. If you, don't, if you don't have time to do the whole 14 miles in, 14 miles back. But really, really neat coastline. Um, it's, I think it's a state park. Nepali Coast State Park. So it's totally protected um, and really, really neat, neat place. Let me see if I can pull up. Uh... Just gonna see if I can pull up a photo of the Nepali Coast to share. And that's on Kauai, so different island, but just a little short plane hop away to um, seeing that. So this is the Nepali coast, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and you can take boat tours too, along the coastline. Um, yeah, 14 miles in of just protected wilderness, really, really special place. Awesome. Didn't want to leave, I bet. Yeah, it's, that sounds scary if it was muddy, because a lot there's there's parts of the trail that are you know one two feet wide, and if you've got a decently heavy backpacking pack on, you know you're gonna watch your footing. That's awesome. I hope to do that hike in the next few years. Well, if no one else has any other questions, um, thank you for coming. I had a great time and I hope you guys are able to visit someday if you haven't already um, and hopefully go to some of those places. There's a lot of really, really cool places you can go to. And yeah, thank you again for coming.